All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Um, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Okay, something that covers conduits because the latest version of the mechanism bugged the cables. Well, mechanism doesn't have anything to do with conduits because Ender IO is what has to do with conduits. And conduits have always been able to be covered with those. You're not going to be able to cover um, mechanism pipes, which you can replace easily with Ender IO pipes uh, with the conduits. Okay, so hailing from the east, the west, and the north. The great, the awesome, the mod pack author of mod pack authors. It is Mr. Computer Ghost. Are we ready for this? Let's get Mr. Computer Ghost up here and see what he has to say. User was moved to your channel. And she'll begin to bit voice to Bonhoff. Hello. Hi, Mr. Computer Ghost. How are you doing today? I'm I'm doing absolutely peachy, wonderful, and awesome. Did you have your coffee today? Indeed I did. And did you have your more cream than coffee or more coffee than cream? More cream than coffee. Hey, that's a man after my own heart. That's what I'm talking about. So, I would like to welcome you to the channel, and thank you very much for being here, though you've been like a permanent fixture on the channel for a couple months now, and thank you very much for that. Um, thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate it very much, and um, say hi to everybody for us. Hello, Chatterino. <laughs> Chatterino, really. <laughs> I can say that. Yes, yes, Chatterino. I know who that comes from, too. Isn't that a stray map thing? No. No? Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. I gotta turn you up. Hold on a second here. That's me adding Arino into the end of a noun. Oh, just okay, like got, it, got it. Torturino. Torturino. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, let's go ahead and get started with things. And the very first thing that I'm going to ask you is, quite simply, what is is your favorite pie? Oh, that's an easy question. Lemon meringue all the way. Lemon meringue pie all the way. And do you like the lemon more or the meringue more? The lemon. The lemon. See, I'm a meringue man myself. I could sit there and probably just get a straw and like slurp the meringue. But the problem is it doesn't slurp all that well. But like crusty meringue. Oh, so good. But I do agree with the lemon. The lemon is good too. I've actually had lemon meringue pie growing up pretty much my entire life because my grandfather's favorite pie was lemon meringue. So I'm right there with really? you, bro. Yes, my grandfather's favorite pie was lemon meringue. Yes, it was. So That's why awesome. don't yeah? So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? We want to know where you're from. Um, you know what you do if you do something for a living. Uh, if you're you know all that stuff. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I live in California. Um, I'm still in school. I currently do not have a job. So, there you go. Okay, and so if you were to get a job, what type of job would you want to get? What are you striving for? What am I striving for? Perhaps, I really don't know yet. Probably something in IT is what I would end up getting. Now, so is it IT because you have a natural aptitude for computers and understand them? I mean, obviously you've written your own mod and you're still in school, so you obviously got something there. Um, is it is it because your parents' influence into getting into computers or what, what brought you down this road? No, no, no. My dad has forever been into computers a lot. He actually hates programming. Okay. So um, I taught myself Java, mm -hmm. and I started. I think I can't remember, but I started. I made a couple mods. I'd never released any of them. Um, when I really started getting into the Minecraft modding community was uh, Mod Jam, actually. Okay, and what did you do on Mod Jam? I made a mod called Forbidden Lands, which added a whole bunch of really evil dimensions. Not nice. dimensions. Biomes. Biomes. Evil biomes. Did you get anything out of these evil biomes, or was it just a biome meant to kill you? There were some 
pretty cool things that you could get in get from them. None of them were really enough to balance it out from the worst of it. It was more of a thing to make your game harder. Uh huh. So what was like the worst of it? What would happen when you walked into Bob's evil biome? Um, there was one called the Thorn Forest, where there were these for thorn shrubs absolutely everywhere. Okay. Acted similar to cactuses, but would knock you back very, very far, usually into another thorn bush. Oh, so you'd like bounce around in the thorn bushes? Yes. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Now, they didn't like, when you tried to vein mine them, they didn't just like all grow back instantly and then and encage you, did they? No, no, no. No, okay. <laughs> awesome, okay. Um, so, you said you live in California, North or Southern California? Southern. Southern. So, SoCal. You're a SoCal kid. Have you lived there your whole life? I have, but I travel frequently to the East Coast where half of my family is. Ah, so do you like, do you do summer trips and stuff like that too? What part of the East Coast? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Okay. I've always wanted to go there. This very really quaint state. I've always, I've never been that far north. My first north I've been is like uh, New York. Um, and that was just driving through to get on the airplane to get out. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so what uh, what do you like outside of computers and gaming and stuff like that? What is what is something that gets you out of the house that you enjoy doing? I honestly really enjoy camping and hiking a lot. Okay. And so are there any notable uh, trails that you've hiked or anything like that? Nothing too notable. I think the longest one I did was like, 21 miles okay and so there's no you haven't been like on the the there's a trail that re leads all the way down the west coast um you haven't been on anything like that no that would okay. be fun though yeah. i'd probably actually ride a bike so is there any aspirations to like uh backpack around europe or do any big backpacking trips or do you want to take this someplace else or is there you know anything like that possibly if i Obviously, I'm able to get enough money to do so. Right, right. <laughs> well, you have a trade already. As a, as a kid, and I have to call you a kid because you're still in school, but as a kid, uh, you have a trade already. You already know how to program. You have the understanding of programming and stuff like that, which is a, a foot above a lot of people at your age, and I commend you for doing something like that. Thank God you had the aptitude to do so. So... Um, and it was just the, the, the fact that you just wanted to make a mod, right? It was the fact that I had an idea and I wanted to see if I could do it. Awesome. Awesome. So what is the process of learning? I mean, what, what was the first thing you did? You said, I want to make this mod. What was the very first thing that you did? Books. <laughs> Books are definitely a key thing. Okay, and so you're you're a person that doesn't shy away from a book, opening it up and just diving in and stuff like that, right? No, I love books. All right, uh, whether it's it, something that's teaching me something or just something for pleasure reading, I love books. All right, so what uh, type of looks, books do you like to read? Do you like fantasy? Do you like horror? Do you like uh, science fiction? Science fiction. Okay, what is your favorite science fiction book? Oh, that's hard. It is hard, isn't it? I have one. I, I have one specifically. But what is your favorite science fiction book? What just reaches out and grabs you? My favorite science fiction? Yeah. I would have probably have to say is Dune. Dune. Amen, brother. I <laughs> love me some Dune. I'm going to have to put Dune. Dune is in my top five. It probably might even be number two or number three. Uh, my number one is Ender's Game. By far, has always been, even before Ender's Game became a movie and stuff. I read it 20 years before it became a movie. Um, but Dune, um, I read I read all of the other books and all of the prequels. Have you read all the prequels to Dune? No, I unfortunately did not. Um, a friend of mine said, hey, I just finished a, finished a book. I thought it was really good. You want to read it? And I'm like, sure. Mm -hmm. And so he gave me the book, it was Dune, and I read it. Okay. So there's a whole after story to Dune to what happens to Paul and what happens 
after all that to Paul's children and stuff. But then there's the whole pre story that that explains the um, why there are no computer living computers and stuff. Why there's only human computers. There's not um, and stuff. There's a whole like I think there's five or six books that his son wrote before Dune. Um, so. I, what I recommend is go back, start at the beginning of those books, and then read all the way through. And the problem is, is when you start getting into the books after Dune, Heretics of Dune is not that bad, but Chapter House Dune and those ones can get a really, really a deep read, and it's not really a lot to keep your stuff. But anyway, we're getting off subject. But yes, Dune is a great book. <laughs> all right, I will have to make sure to read those. Yes. Um, okay, so on with the questions, okay? What made you think of the infamous Runic Dungeons? Well, here's a long-ish story. It started with a mod that I guess you could say that I was part of the development team of. Called, um... Dang it. Bob's Mod, for lack of a better term right now. Well, lack of, Magician's <laughs> Artifice. Okay. And, like, somewhere through development of it, I don't know if anything's been done, even done with it since. I was making a lot of textures for it. Mm -hmm. And I made this really cool, you see the textures in the Runic Dungeon. Okay, okay. Those are some of the textures I had originally made for it. Awesome, okay. And so, you got Except into... they weren't yeah. Markomannic runes, they were actually Hebrew. So oh, okay. I changed it to Markomannic later. Okay. <laughs> And I have no idea what Marco Manic is. I didn't even know that there was... I haven't looked close enough because I'm just too busy killing shit in there to, to, to actually notice the runes. So what's Marco Manic? I have no idea what that is. It is um, a runic language. Okay. Runic language is from what race? Where from? Marco Manic runes are from, I believe, the 8th to 9th centuries. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um... What sort of mods uh, do you suggest be used in conjunction with your with Runic Dungeons? What do you recommend goes with Runic Dungeons? Well, it really depends on what you want to do. If you want to make it harder, mm -hmm. there's, of course, always things like Infernal Mobs, Special Mobs. Okay. All right. Uh, if you want things that will help you, things that will help you progress, some things I would definitely recommend are things like things that add new tools new weapons such as metallurgy with the swords with the special effects uh-huh um baubles my mod has integration with the baubles mod nice okay and, and a lot of really cool features from it are part of that which you only get if you have the baubles mod installed okay and so who does the baubles mod and how did that relationship come about Azenor. Azenor, okay. I, there are a few other mods, not to name any right now, that use the Bobbles API and can use the Bobbles mod as a core for their mod. They use it for a bunch of other things, namely Botania, Thomcraft. Okay. And so I thought, hey, it would be cool to have some things like this, like some amulets or some belts. And I decided to add my own. Now, I haven't personally got much into baubles, okay? Does baubles take up an inventory slot, or is there an interface where you can put the baubles um, on your character? Baubles adds four new inventory slots. Okay. Uh, room for an amulet, two ring slots, and a slot for your belt. Awesome. Okay. And so as far as your mod is concerned, um, so what was really the goal moving forward through it? What, what did you want to accomplish? Did you want, was there a goal to give another access to nether stars? Was it just as a add on to vanilla that you wanted people to have a chance to have, do a little bit more adventure? What was really the goal to push for, for runic dungeons? I wanted some type of, special dungeon to spawn in the world in the overworld that you would go in and you'd have to progress through it with a key now how can you specifically do this 
without messing up other generation, messing up everything else, right. can be done. But why would you do that when you could have a practically infinite dungeon? Right. Another dimension, that idea came to me a bit later. Yeah. And so my idea was, hey, you have to go through here, you have to defeat this, you have to complete this level, room, whatever, mm -hmm. in order to get the key. Okay. So as far as the keys are concerned, is there a way to craft keys if you, like, lose your key or die because of a key is gone to move forward in the dungeon? I haven't looked that deep into it, and I'm sorry. You can either A, craft it with a nether star, mm -hmm. or defeat a wither inside the dungeon. Okay. And the wither inside the dungeon will give you another key to move on, correct? Correct. Awesome. Okay. So what Any are some wither, of... If it's a wither spawned in the dungeon by you, if it's generated in the dungeon... So, yeah, and that's what the guys were telling me yesterday when I was needing nether stars. Is they said, there's just go spawn one in the runic dungeon. I would get a key, and then I could actually tear the key apart using the uncrafting table and get two nether stars out of a um, uh, wither. Was that intended? That was never intended. <laughs> in my opinion, that's an exploit. In your opinion, that's an exploit. Okay. Um, I do believe that there's a way that you can make it so it's uncraftable in the uncrafting table. I don't know. Um, but yes, that was what I was told yesterday. Anyway, and I didn't know. <laughs> um, all right. So do you have any plans? Um, what plans do you have for continued expansion of Runic Dungeons? What's, what's in the future for Runic Dungeons? What is in the future? Specifically, namely, a new dimension with larger rooms, smaller corridors, sub-rooms, known as the Demonic Dungeons, which will be, while the Runic Dungeons are more of like an overworld-themed dungeon, these will be like more of a nether-themed dungeon to give you a stance on that. Nice, okay, and do you, do you plan on going farther than that with, with other themed dungeons, nether, and then end, and then... Um... Absolutely. Awesome. There are some blocks that are already implemented, for instance, the demonic bricks, chaotic sand, that will give you that give you an idea of what they will be themed like. Nice. Okay. So, um, since you've already used the wither as one of the bosses in the 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 mod, what would be your what? Do you have any ideas for what the boss would be for the nether areas? I'm I'm sorry that my dog was barking. <laughs> no problem. Um, since you already used the wither for your boss in the main part of the dungeon, is there any plans to make another boss for the nether parts of the dungeon and so on and so forth? Well, there is the dungeon guardian, of course. Yeah. The, there will be more guardians, different types of guardians in the demonic dungeons. Gotcha. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, are there any other mods that you have created, and can you give us a brief synopsis of each and tell us about them? Um, all right. Of course, there is, obviously, Forbidden Lands, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, there is Flowstone, which is, think of it like a drinkable lucky block. A drinkable lucky block. Nice. Okay. D go on. Elaborate more on that. That sounds interesting. It was Mod Jam 4. Okay. So you you just... It, is, okay. There were different types of uh, flowstone mixtures, as I called it. Uh-huh. And what they did, they did different things. They did random things. Each was had a different idea, like energetic flowstone gave you buffs, but for every single one of them, there was a chance it would do something, it would go wrong, and cause something absolutely horrible to happen, like you blowing up, spawning a wither, etc. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> that is awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Uh, real quick, we have to acknowledge something here, but we're not going to do the guns and ammos until we're done with the interview. Um, all right. Hey, we just got raided by iJevin. iJevin, double thumbs up to you, man. Thank you so much for the raid, bro. You are kick butt, guys. Thank you so much for the raid, Jevin. You are awesome, my friend. Uh, Raiders, uh, we are doing what's called a mod author interview. 
Um, and in this mod author interview, we are currently interviewing Mr. Computer Boast, Ghost of Runic Dungeon. So sit back, relax, uh, and have a good time and enjoy the uh, enjoy the uh, the interview. All right. So we're going to continue on here. Um, you're there will be a question and answer session at the end of the uh my questions here we will do the question and answer session so uh i javin thanks for the raid man you're awesome bro all right um okay so uh where are we okay and i'm back sorry about that um okay. has the channel been defended well um we're, we're not going to do the the channel defense we're going to put that off until afterwards so that's the plan um <laughs> all <right. laughs> um all right so are there any other up and coming mods that you're currently writing? There indeed is. Oh, what I'm would that be? <laughs> on a Botania add on, which the working name is Botanical Expansion. I released a screenshot maybe two on Twitter. Awesome. Okay. Or before. And so what is that? What's it going to expand on Botanica? What's going to, what's going to do with it? Well, for now, I'll leave a bit of it a secret, but I can tell you that it adds a few more automation things. Not in the thing of automating Botania itself, but as in, for instance, ore processing, harvesting, etc. There are already quite a few things in Botania to do this, but I plan on expanding upon this. Awesome. That sounds really cool. And I cannot wait to see this. Okay. Um, back to your liquid lucky blocks is, is that something that's updated for one seven ten? Have you been updating that or? I have not updated it yet. There is a one seven two version that I believe from what I've heard does actually work with one seven ten with minimal crashes. Okay. Minimal. We like minimal. Minimal. <laughs> minimal. <laughs> I have planned on updating it, just haven't had any inspiration to do so. There have been a few people bugging me about updating it, namely a certain person in the chat right now. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and I believe that we have a picture of one of the things from your Batania add-on, and you wanted me to show that. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, let's take a look here. Mm -hmm. and there all right guys this is the picture that he wanted me to show you looks like we got a now is it the square block that's up above that uh is it or is it the one that's down below below it the cauldron below, the thing. cauldron okay and do you want to tell us what the cauldron does or is that top secret i'll tell you what that does it allows you to extract the mana from items using some source of either RF power or coal or charcoal. Nice. Okay. And do you just store it in the cauldron or are you going to have to have one cauldron per? Well, mana is just plain mana. That's right. I was thinking about different colors, but I guess not. So it basically stores up in there after you've extracted it, correct? It will go into any mana pool next to it. Awesome. Okay. That's cool. Cool, cool, cool. Like, right. say, you put um, a. Mana steel ingot, you get an iron ingot back, and whatever mana was used to create it will go into the mana pool next to it. Oh, wow. So it's like a deconstruction of, of some of the stuff you've done, and you get your mana back. That's cool. Correct. That is really, really cool. Um, okay, I think that that is it for all of the questions today. So I think we're going to turn this over to Q&A from the channel. So uh, everybody, um, everybody... Go ahead and start posting your questions that you have for Mr. Computer Ghost into the channel, and we will go ahead and ask him. So You cut out. Yeah, I cut out. Um, yeah, I cut out because I was just continuing to talk to them in the channel. Um, they We're going to wait the customary 20 seconds uh, for the lag to catch up, and we'll see what we get for some questions. Uh, let's borrow to make a mod. What tips are... Okay, so uh, Haiku Fox uh, says, for those of us who aspire to make a mod, what tips do you have, uh, meaning Mr. Computer Ghost, for learning to make a mod? Any recommended literature? Learn Java. First of all, learn Java. Okay, and is there a specific book that you recommend? There is. I forget the name of it. I believe it's called Efficient Java. 
Okay, efficient I, Java. Okay. I can't remember the author, author's name. I'll have to find it. Okay. Um, Unreal Dinnerbone says, "Are you going to talk more about the Torturino?" Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. Um, I will not bring the super compressed conversation into this. No super compressed conversation into this. No problem. Uh, will you be updating Runic Dungeons to 1.8? Yes. Okay. Uh, do we have a timeline on that? Once demonic dungeons are implemented. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, how do you? How are you so amazing? You know, I really don't know. I guess that's a matter of opinion. A <laughs> matter of opinion. Um, it's genetics and upbringing, by the way. <laughs> uh, where did your name come from? Where did the name Mr. Computer Ghost come from? Did you catch that? Give me a moment. I have to take care of my dog. Uh, no problem. Anyway, guys, we're waiting for him to deal with his dog real quick in the middle of an interview. I guess we'll know, uh, I guess if I ever get to meet this dog, we, him and I are going to have to have some uh, discussions, okay? Uh, Crusher, we actually asked how what inspired him to make the mod in the questions earlier uh, in the interview. So um, that if what you're going to do is this will be uploaded to YouTube. Um, and on YouTube, you can go ahead and watch uh, the YouTube video and you can see what uh, inspired him to make the mods, okay? Um, so that's up and coming. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so we're after this, you guys, we're going to pop back into the world, uh, into my karma world. And we're going to be talking, we're going to keep on making our, um, uh, which we call our, uh, spawner. So I'm going to go ahead and make four, um, ender or nether pigmen spawners and we'll make one witch spawner and one blaze spawner and we'll have those up and rolling and i'm going to kill them the traditional way with spikes and so on and so dog forth has been taken care of outstanding dog has been taken care of okay we were talking about what was the last question i asked uh where did name, you, i think it yeah, was your name yes where did your name come from pretty much um bugs in games a friend of mine suggesting that the reason they existed was because of there was a ghost in the computer. Oh, okay. Ghost in the computer. Got it. Okay, that sounds cool. Um, so I'm supposed to ask if the k -Kalium conspiracy is confirmed. KKC confirmed 2015. Okay, I guess it's confirmed, you guys. 2015. He just confirmed it. <laughs> Do I need to ask more about that or would you have to kill me? I would have to kill you. Okay, got it. No murder here involved at all. <laughs> um, let's see what else we got here. And... Um, uh, it can be a while since I have having refreshed myself. Okay. Um, I think... Uh, where did Solaru's question go here? Let me let me find Solaru's question. Okay. Do you like web comics? If so, what is one of your favorites? I do. One of the ones I was reading was uh, called Ava's Demon. Okay. And what is that webcomic about? I haven't ever heard of it. Well, I'd tell you, but it would kind of ruin it. Okay. <laughs> it's one of those things that you just have to read. Okay. And what is it called again? Ava's Demon. Ava's Demon. Okay. We are not going to talk about age on the channel, Justin. All right, chat. Any more questions here? Any more questions that we have for Mr. Computer Ghost before we continue on? I'm asking if they have any more questions. Okay. Uh, Terraria Master would like to know what 1 plus 1 is. I believe it's 11. I do. I agree. I completely agree. It's either 11 or 3. Um, because you take the 1 and make it a point. You take the plus, make it a point, and you take the 1, and that's 3, right? Yes, then you have to divide by one. Uh-huh. 
Um, I'm just gonna be doing uh, liquid. Okay. Um, how do the liquid lucky blocks work? Um, Jevonator would like see. to know. You can either find them in dungeon chests, or if you have lucky okay. blocks installed, you can craft it with a empty glass bottle, and you will get a flowstone mixture. Nice. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite mod apart from your own? Oh God. <laughs> That's a rough one, isn't it? It is. There's because just... I could say something that would make someone in the chat happy, but it would make another person in the chat sad, so... Say them both, then. Together. <laughs> say them both, then? Together? Yes. I have to say, I really like Thalmcraft. Okay. That that's one that I that I'm pretty sure won't make anyone angry. Okay, Thomcraft it is then. Okay, it's um, a really great mod. Yes, I I played Thomcraft quite a lot. Uh, the problem oh, I Go I ahead. just noticed Unreal Dinnerbone note just said Torturino. That Go is one of my favorite mods. I will say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. With Thomcraft, I think when the, he started making it intricate and having to run around and scan everything, I think is where I really lost Thomcraft. Um, and... I like that. I like complexity. Well, the thing is, is that I kind of have a, uh, a back and forth with it. Because the reason I like the idea of adventuring, okay, and, and going having to... I do like that idea, okay? It's just the, I guess, the whole discovery thing that had in the... Um, when you opened up the table and you had to put these things together to discover this and stuff like that, you know, that was the problem that I had. But running around and scanning stuff was pretty cool. I wish that there, and I, from, it's been a very long time since I played it, but at the time I had wished that there was a clue that could tell you you're currently missing this. If you maybe scan something that is brown and has grass on it, you might be able to get the, that. There is something like that. Um, it now says when you try to scan something and you don't know it, it says in order to understand this, you must study, and it gives you a hint. Oh, nice. Okay, yes, it's been a while since I get it. The only reason that it probably won't make it into um, karma is the whole OP-ness of it. It really does get a little bit overpowered and stuff like that. Um, Only it's... late game. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And it, we're just not looking for that much OP-ness late game, I guess. Um but then again, isn't isn't Draconic Evolution, which I know is in the pack, OP end game? Yes, but there's a reason for needing Draconic Evolution, and that is to take care of the Chaos Guardian. And I don't even know if you can take care of the Chaos Guardian when you're completely OP with Draconic Evolution. We did that was an unintended thing. I didn't even know the Chaos Guardian existed in the game. Um, so, yeah, it was unintended. We'll have to see how that all works out upcoming next week, right? Right. Okay. Uh, for different player... Any more uh, questions? Yes. Uh, Drock would like to know, any plans on making different dungeons for different player, as in multiplayer servers and stuff like that? In other words, each of us having our own instance. I am planning on it, and there will be a party system where you can invite someone to your dungeon so you can go exploring with them. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Okay. All right. I think we're good on the question for the day. Uh, Mr. Computer Ghost, thank you so very, very much for being here today. Um, I just love having you guys on here. And like I said, I've said before, this is to give you guys a voice. Because if it wasn't for the mod authors, our mod packs wouldn't be anything okay and you guys need a voice and thank you so much for being here tonight thank you so much for having me not a problem all right we're gonna go ahead and move you down hold on a second User was moved out of your all right everybody that was mr computer ghost of runic dungeons the question is did you guys enjoy that? Was that a good interview? Did you guys enjoy learning a little bit more about Mr. Computer Ghost and Runic Dungeons and stuff like that? Did you guys enjoy that? Yeah, I gotta wait for the, her that the caster again one shot to you, even if you're wearing draconic armor. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun, Cosmo Citric. I cannot wait for it, man. Um, 
I don't know. How would you know what's up next week, Mr. Unreal Dinnerbone? Uh, I haven't announced that yet, Mr. Unreal Dinnerbone. <laughs> awesome. I missed it. Well, you will be able to see this interview on on High Speed Local.